So far, we've identified three primary drivers of mountain climates at large spatial scales, latitude, elevation, and continentality. We've also discussed how climate can vary within a mountain range, depending on its orientation to the prevailing winds. However, smaller scale drivers also influence local climates on a given mountain. So next we'll discuss how climate is influenced by the direction a slope is facing, called slope aspect, the angle of a slope, and topography, the physical features of the landscape. First, let's consider how slope aspect influences the amount of solar radiation received. Mountain slopes that are oriented towards the sun will receive more incoming solar radiation, leading to warmer climates. Topographic variation in slope of the terrain can produce local differences in solar radiation equivalent to tens of degrees of latitude. When solar radiation intercepts the Earth, the spherical nature of our planet causes south-facing slopes in the northern hemisphere to receive more direct solar radiation than north-facing slopes. This pattern is reversed in the southern hemisphere with north-facing slopes receiving more sunshine. Slope angle also influences the amount of solar radiation received on mountains. Maximum solar radiation is received when mountain slopes are perpendicular to the sun's rays. At the equator, near zero degrees latitude, the sun's rays hit the Earth's surface directly. Here, mountain slopes receive less solar radiation than flat surfaces. At increasingly higher latitudes, steeper slopes are more likely to directly intercept the sun's rays. The amount of solar radiation received on a slope facing the sun will increase with increasing slope angle up to the point where the slope angle is equal to the latitude of the location. So for example, at 45 degrees south, maximum solar radiation is received on mountain slopes at a 45 degree angle relative to the horizontal surface. Conversely, slope aspects facing away from the sun receive minimal solar radiation when their slope angle equals the latitude of their location. Of course, there are always exceptions to every rule. The exception to our relatively simple temperature profiles is illustrated in this diagram that shows conditions in a valley in the Austrian Alps in January. Each slope in the valley will have a different exposure, which complicates matters, but in this case, notice that the highest peak has an odd temperature profile. Temperatures are around minus 20 degrees Celsius at the peak, and they increase as we move downwards. However, they then begin to decrease quite dramatically to the point where the lowest temperatures are found in the bottom of the valley. As we go up the other smaller peak, it stays quite cold until we reach the pass, after which temperatures warm up abruptly. This phenomenon is known as a temperature inversion and is relatively common in mountainous areas, especially in winter. Cold air is denser than warm air, so it tends to sink. And in winter, if you get a nasty cold snap, all that sinking cold air will pool in the valleys. If your slopes are very steep, there's a chance that the sun's energy may never penetrate to the bottom of the valley to warm it up. That's what's happened in this valley. The cold air has filled the valley to the level of the pass, which is acting like an overflow valve, letting the cold air spill out into the next valley. The temperature profile on the uppermost slopes is mostly controlled by the direct radiation input from the sun, but in the lower parts of the valley is controlled by the sinking of cold air from the upper slopes and the fact that it pools in the valley floor. Slope aspect and slope angle influence the amount of solar radiation, but there's even a finer scale of topographic variation that can have a significant influence on environmental conditions on a mountain slope. The complex and highly variable topography of mountain environments create numerous microclimates. Microclimates are small areas with conditions that differ from that of the surrounding region. At high elevations, the thin atmosphere exaggerates temperature differences between shaded and sunny areas. Even on the slopes facing the sun, 
surfaces are sheltered by boulders and other topography, creating cool microclimates. Microclimates can also provide shelter from wind or precipitation and are important habitats for many animals and plants that live in mountain environments. We'll explore how organisms have adapted to life in alpine climates in upcoming lessons, but for now, let's consider the link between mountain climates and the formation of alpine tree lines.